Welcome to my video about how we use the futures market as a hedger, but in this example, I'm talking about a buyer. Now, I've got this feed yard here that you can see in my picture. Um, that is my example today. I am a hedger, but I'm a buyer. That's what I'm looking at. I'm a buyer for this feed yard. In fact, this is my feed yard I own, let's say, and this operation really requires me to get cattle bought at the right price. That way I can feed them in my feed yard and let's say I have a high valued product and so I'm going to feed these cattle a very certain way and then they're going to get sold later for me. Now what I sell them for I hopefully is a price higher than I bought them for. That would be how I would make money, right? So it's really a concern for me what I pay for these cattle when I put them in the feed yard. Remember the other thing about the futures market and a hedger is that we have time risk. And that time risk equals what we call price risk, right? And in fact, what's the risk of every buyer? In our example here is the price is going up. That is <clears throat> my risk. So I'm worried about the price going up on me because I put these cattle in my feed yard, buy them at a certain price, then I got to feed them. It takes me time and then I get them sold. Well, if the market price when I get them sold happens to go down or go up, that would all be part of my business. But I've got to worry about what I paid for these. And I've got these cattle in my feed yard right now, and I'm going to sit there with time for them to eat. Well, I need to be looking at what the next set of cattle are going to take to get in this feed yard so that I can put them on feed for a time period. So you can see I've got this time risk in here, and then I've got my price risk. I need to pay as little as possible. All right, so what this means is this means I need to use, since I'm a hedger, I need to use two markets. Now, should have said this in the beginning, but be an active learner. Write down these things with me. That way you'll be able to retain the information and answer some questions. All right, so these are my cattle in my feed yard. My worry is that price is going to go up. So I go ahead and set up the hedge. Again, I'm looking at a buyer's perspective. So how many markets am I involved in? Well, of course, I've got these cattle. I'm involved in the cash market. And I'm going to say that today is April is my example. All right, today's April, the cash market. I need to know what are the cattle bringing today? And so I'll figure that out in a second. What about the next market? I'm involved also in the futures market, or that's another market I could get involved in. And I need to know what the prices are in that market. And then the next is the basis. And that is just simply the difference between these two cash, minus futures equals basis. So as you're taking notes, also, by the way, there's some very important parts that I want to define these terms. So I'm going to, I'm going to highlight basis here and you need to make sure that you know what the basis is. In fact, it is cash minus futures. That is what the basis is. All right. Now that's my setup of my hedge. Today is April. My cattle are on feed right now and they're going to go through and get sold. What I'm worried about is what's the next set going to cost me? So let's just say that you're going to go from today and we're going to go to somewhere in July because that's when I'll be ready for my next set of cattle. So from here, from April to July, my risk is what? What's the risk? My risk is that the price might go which way on me? Up. And that'd be a problem because I'm buying these cattle today or I'm getting ready to look at what I might buy them for. And if they actually cost me more in July, and let me change colors because July, you want to write, that's when you're really going to buy them. That's why I'm a buyer. That kind of is my scenario. All right. But the problem is I don't know that price in July in the cash market. So then I come to the futures market. I want to use this market to help protect this market. So that's kind of the idea. Since my concern is the price in this market would go up on me, meaning I've got these cattle in my feed yard, but the next set I bring in is going to cost me way more money. <clears throat> then that's kind of a problem for me. So how can I use the futures market to make that better? In other words, how can I make money here to help offset if I lose money here? And that's the whole idea of a hedge. Now to do that, we need to know about these markets. So these are my cattle. That serves as my example. Let me get this out of the way. And then now let me bring in the futures market.
Now I'm looking at an August contract. Why am I looking at an August contract? Because I have a need or a worry all the way till July. So I need a futures contract that trades past that date. So I'm going to pull in this August contract. That's what I'm looking at. I'm going to abbreviate August in the futures market. You can see that the prices have been very high, like in the 150, 152, even higher range. And then recently they dropped off really low. Then they creep back up and you can see a lot of erratic movement. Well, let's just say the market right now is at a dollar. Well, it actually quotes it as 128.4. I actually am going to move that decimal over. And so here's the futures market. Let's talk about what that is a little bit. Well, the futures market is representing 50,000 pound contracts, okay? Now, my feed yard here, the cash market that I'm involved in, I bring in about 500 head at a time. I bring them in weighing about, uh, oh, about 800 pounds. And so if I'm bringing in 500 head at 800 pounds a piece, that's going to multiply up to a little over 400,000 pounds. So 50,000 contracts, how many do I need? Looks like I need about eight of these contracts to cover my 500 head that I'm looking at. All right, but these are 50,000 pound contracts. Looks like I'm going to need about eight of them if I want to protect myself here. Uh, the price that it's coming in at is 128.4. Now that is per what we call cut weight. That's a term for you. Cut weight equals 100 pound weight. That's the same thing. So 128.4, what is that per pound? Move the decimal over. That is a little over $1.28 per pound right now. That's what I see in the futures market. So if I bring that over, I'm going to put that $1.28.4 in April. That's what that August contract is trading for. That means that I need now to look at the cash. So I'm going to bring in the cash market. Here is a quoted price in Amarillo. Uh, the quoted price in Amarillo is $1.09. You can see the M1. You can see the M1-2 and you can see the M2. That's a medium framed animal. That's the price. You can see the different weights. I'm looking at about that. Uh, I'm looking at about that 800 number, the bottom one. I'm looking at about a dollar nine is what that is per pound. And so that's what that value is. Now you can see also the one, the one dash two and the two. One is your beef cattle frame kind, the kind I want to buy. The one to two means you've got some dairy mixed in, lighter framed. And the straight up twos are going to be definitely lighter framed. I'm not going to want those. So I'm looking at that M medium frame one. I'm looking at that $1.09 price, and this just gives me a good indication of what the market's at. Now, the problem is all of this is right now in April today. I don't know what July looks like, but here is what April looks like. So let's deal with the futures market. How are we going to put ourselves in a position here to help manage this risk? Remember, the risk is price going up. So what you do is, is you come to this market and you take a buy position on that August contract at $1.28. By the way, here's a term for you. That means that we are long. So I'm going to put a box around these important terms. In fact, that 50,000 pound contract is an important term as well. That's what these feeder contracts are. One contracts covers 50,000 pounds of, in this case, feeder cattle. Now, a buy position is called long. That means that now we've got a buy at $1.28. Now, the difference between that is the cash minus the futures. We call that the basis. And that is a little over 19 cents right now a pound. That's what the basis is, a negative 0.194. I just took the 109 minus the 128. That's what gave me that number. All right, so that sets the hedge. In fact, that also creates another important term right there. The beginning cash price, I like to call that my lock-in. 
So what's your lock-in? That's the beginning cash price. That's an important price to come back to because as we were looking at the cash price, we saw the dollar nine. Looking at these markets actually here and the futures, prices look to be low right now. I'm a buyer. I like that. I want to protect that. So I go ahead and try to lock in that dollar nine. I'm going to use the futures market to do it because I don't know what I'm actually going to pay for these cattle when I get ready in Amarillo to go buy them in July. I see what they're at now, but I don't have any position. I don't have any cash contract. I'm wide open here. So I use the futures market to help me. All right, let's play this out. All right, so here's where the market's at. I need to estimate July. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here for us. Let me estimate July. Here's where things are. In fact, I'm going to leave these things up because these are, these are where we know we are right now. We've already put that over here. But let me estimate July. So let's see the futures. What is it going to do? And I'm talking about that August contract, right? I have to stick with the August contract. Let's say that the markets move back up and let's say I put that See, it moves up to $1.52 a pound, so it goes up to $1.52. What about the cash? That's our other thing to deal with. Cash price also goes up as well, and let's say that it goes to $1.38. Now, that's not a good deal for us. In fact, if we come through here, let's plug these prices into this table. So if you see this written as a problem, that'll always be the beginning information, then that'll always be the ending information. It all needs to go in the same table. So what are we gonna buy our cattle for? $1.38, not what we hoped, but that's what happened to us. The futures market, that August contract is trading now for, we have here, $1.52. And that means that the difference between these two and the basis is a 14 cent basis. All right, let me draw a line underneath all this stuff here. Let's carry all of this down and see what happens. Well, first of all, on the August contract, we would take a what? A sell position on this. We originally had a buy, that's called long. Once we get out, we just sell that contract. And by doing that, that has enabled us to buy it at $1.28. Market went up. We were able to sell it. We made a little over 23 cents on that. That's a profit. Now, remember, we had eight contracts. They were 50,000 pounds a piece. In fact, we were protecting a little over 400,000 pounds of beef here. <clears throat> Just looking at that as far as profit goes, that's actually about $94,000, $94,400 worth of profit here. So that's a pretty good deal. So 23 cents, you may not feel like seems like much, but 50,000 pound contract, I've got eight of these. That's quite a bit of chump change. That's not chump change. That's money for us in our business. That's going to help us because the cash market hurt us, didn't it? In fact, that dollar nine we were shooting for called a lock-in, we paid a dollar thirty-eight. We actually lost here about twenty-nine cents in value. So that's kind of a bummer. Now the basis was nineteen cents, went down to fourteen. It changed. That's called a change in basis. It changed by a little over a nickel here, 0.5 cent change. All right, so there's the hedge. I've got a beginning, I've got an end. I've got the futures market, made me money, that's good, made me a little over 23 cents. However, the cash market hurt me by 29 cents. These things are all explained by the change in basis to make sure the math's right. This is kind of a little check for you. Make sure these changes add up. Make sure that change equals across here as well. So that's kind of a little bit of a, of a, of a check for you. So you might want to kind of Mark, that is how you can check yourselves here in your table. But once we get this table done, we're pretty much done. Let's look at our net. How did this help me? Well, remember, you got you to gotta remember here, you're involved in two markets. So you're involved in the cash and the futures. Let's talk about the cash first. I'm going to use my green here. The cash that we had to pay... I'm going to put pay here because that helps me remember what I did. I paid $1.38. I was hoping to pay $1.09, but we'll see how that works out. Now, the futures market helped me. It gave me a profit of 
a little over 23 cents. So I'm going to put that as a profit. So overall, what'd you really give? Well, I paid $1.38 way more than I wanted. However, I got some profit. Now, got to be careful here whether you subtract or add this. Remember, I'm a buyer. My goal is to get the price down, right? So if I pay a high price, but I'm able to profit, then that means I get to deduct that profit. So really, I didn't pay $1.38. Really, what did I pay? The net is a dollar, a little over $1.14. So that is my net price, which is really one of the questions you always get asked. You make sure I'll block that as well. Well, how can you check this again? Well, your net price is going to be related to what you hope to lock in, which was $1.09, right? But I didn't make it. I'm a little off. What explains how far I'm off? It's that change in basis. If you look at a dollar nine, it really is going to change by a little over five cents. That puts me at a dollar fourteen, one fourteen four cents per pound. Now, why is that not my dollar nine? Well, it's because the futures market, the cash market, sorry, hurt me by twenty nine cents. I was able to get a little over twenty three cents back. Again, not chump change. That's about $94,000 in my little feed yard business. All right, hopefully this video helps you understand how the futures market could be used by a hedger, but I need to look at a buyer example. Buyers and sellers are very different. So this buyer example kind of gives you the setup very similar to the seller, but the net price is a little bit different of a function. If we can take the money we paid, and if we can make any money at all, we're going to take that away from our cost and actually lowers our cost, which we like. We didn't pay $1.38. Because we learned to use the futures market, we only paid $1.14. Put our cattle in the feed yard, and that way we're able to get a better cost to buy them, which means when we sell them, hopefully we have a better chance to make a profit and be sustainable. All right, hopefully this video helps you understand the futures market from the buyer's perspective.